January 1st, 2000 was a pretty momentous day for me. Not just because it was the, cha the start of the new century, but because it was also the day that I was going forth on a new adventure to start my first business. I was so excited about everything that the future held for me and what we were doing. And I was starting a business called TRIA, which was an executive search consultancy with another entrepreneur. And together we were going to create this amazing headhunting business. I know it doesn't sound very exciting, but to us it was. And we had a brand, we had a business plan, we had a financial forecast that was going to make us five million in three years. Anybody here have one of those? <laughs> um, three weeks later, Tria was no more. It was possibly one of the shortest headhunting businesses in history and officially what is known as an oh shit moment for me. I felt sick. I had told everybody about this new venture. I had quit my job. I had no immediate prospects of income and I didn't know what was coming next. Now thank God I had some great people in my life who were supportive and I sat down with my old boss and he said, you know what Julie, he said, you can still do this. You still have the skills. You're still the same person. So why don't you give it a go? And I thought, OK, I'll give it a go. So I launched 4 and 20, which was my own executive search business. Now, I'd love to stand here and tell you that it was an amazing success. And for a year, it was quite successful. I made about 80,000 pounds in the first year, which is not bad going for somebody that's just starting out and for someone that actually knew nothing about executive search. But the thing was, I was miserable. I can't even begin to tell you how much I hated my business. And what I want to share with you is really important, which if you hate it, Stop doing it. It doesn't make sense to continue. Find something to do that is really going to light your fire and make you feel excited. The other thing that it taught me was that money wasn't everything. 80,000 pounds was quite a lot of money back in 2000. I mean, it's not masses, but it was pretty good. I had a good life. I lived in central London, was able to go to restaurants all, you know, whenever I wanted, could go on holiday. I was single. It was fabulous. But that was everything that was outside of my life. Most of my time, I really had to drag my sorry ass out of bed, look at my desk, feel sick to my stomach at the thought of picking up the phone and trying to persuade somebody to try to come for an interview for me with a job that I wasn't sure was actually going to be that brilliant. So I stopped. And I was very lucky. I then went on to become an independent consultant. There are lots of different kinds of micro-entrepreneurs. None of these options are things, and none of the, these options are something that almost anybody could do. All of these options are here, something that almost anybody can do. There is something out there for everybody. So I became an independent consultant, but was still a bit lost. Um, and I decided I wanted to do something creative. So I took a month off and taught myself how to build websites. And for about four years, did both of those two things together, and it was great. And then after my daughter was born, I decided that I was just going to focus on the web business because it was quite a nice um, business to run from home. And everything was sort of channeling along really well. And then when my second child was born, I decided I needed to grow. I needed to do something a bit more. Rather than just working as a freelancer, I was going to do something a bit more exciting. And uh, I went out to find other people. And at that point, I really learned what business was about. So I was good at winning business. And when you run a micro business, uh, those of you that do will know you go through this cycle of win the business, do the business, win the business, do the business. And I was sick of that. So I launched, uh, I made, decided I was going to make my business bigger and started working with associates and discovered there was this whole world of small business that I had no idea that existed. And it was quite amazing. And managed to create a very small, successful boutique web agency. But something was still missing. And in 2008, I launched what is now the business that is my heart, that is my passion, and that makes a difference every day. And that business is Women Unlimited. And we teach women entrepreneurs how to build and grow successful micro-businesses of their own. 
Now, what I'm here to tell you, talk to you today about is actually the magic of thinking small. You'll be hearing people talking to you about innovation, about big ideas, about things that you can do, and you'll be thinking to yourself about making million pound companies. But I want to encourage you to think a little bit differently. Imagine what you're doing and think about whether that activity that you're performing is really making you excited. The secret to a successful business is meaning, it's impact. It's about using the talents and the skills that you've been given and that you've gained through your life. It's about using your passions to really make a difference in the world, to make a change. And I'm not going to sit here and say to you that you need to, passion is the only answer, because it's not. There are very successful micro-entrepreneurs that just use the skills that they've got to add value to another part of the community, and they're very successful and they're very happy. And the thing about being a micro-entrepreneur that you'll discover is that actually it's not even necessarily what you're doing that makes you happy. It's the independence. It's the freedom. It's the control. And if you talk to somebody about starting your own business and they say, ah, oh, well, you're just creating your own job. Well, I say, why the hell not? It's amazing. I get to choose every day what I do. I get to choose whether I am marketing to my community. I get to choose whether I'm running an event. I get to decide what I'm doing. And that's just me, right? So these are my choices. But there are lots of different options out there. There's a woman in my community that is a cupcake maker. Now, lots of people are quite dismissive of these hobby-type businesses. Well, Melissa is a bit different. Her business is called Miss Cupcake, and she makes vegan cupcakes. People so loved her cupcakes, they used to ask her to make them for them. And so she thought, well, if other people like these cupcakes so much, why don't I start seeing if I can sell them in the market? And she did. And they went, she used Twitter to build up uh, some demand and connect with her customers. And she went to Greenwich Market one day a week, then three days a week, then five days a week. Then she found new markets. Today, she owns a vegan cupcake store, a proper retail outlet in Brixton. She has a book which is extraordinarily popular on how to make vegan cupcakes. And she teaches other food-based businesses how to be successful. She's got nine staff, and she is really doing what she loves, and she is making a difference in her small corner. Another friend of mine, a woman called Louise Tutor, she's, got, she's on her third business, which actually brings me to another point. Quite often, the business you start out is not the business you end up with. And part of the reason for that is because as you're developing your, your ideas and you're exploring your role as an entrepreneur, you discover that actually things that you didn't know you'd like, you love, and things that you thought you'd love, you hate. So Louise is now on her third business, and she's actually running two businesses consecutively. One is a job site, which uh, she was from the call center industry, so it's set up so that it automatically... Um, agencies can automatically upload the job, so that kind of just runs itself and brings her in a nice little income. In 2009, she launched a business called Chob and Bride. Now, Chob and Bride is a bridal boutique that's so small, she can only fit one bride in at a time. She uh, was only able to buy about 25 dresses to have in her repertoire, and she was a single mum, so she had to see the brides between 10 and 2, Monday to Friday, and all day Saturdays. It turned out to be the perfect business for her and for her life. And today, she is one of the most popular bridal boutiques in Surrey. She has an 83% conversion from visitors that come in for that first appointment to buying her dress from her. Why is that? Well, that's because she identified that by having a small range, people liked that they had less choice. By offering that really personalized one-to-one -one service, the brides loved that. And she really paid so much attention to detail to make sure that she was giving them what they wanted. And as a result, she's been enormously successful. Now, the world of work is changing. Intuit predicted in the States, well, in, in the States, they reckon there's about 21 million independent workers, micro-entrepreneurs, call them what you will. 
By 2018, they're predicting 32 million. That's one third increase. Flexible workforce is becoming the way that many people are working. Doctors, lawyers, accountants, plumbers, all these guys are working for themselves, creating their own revenue, creating their own economy. Now, we're effectively ignored by most governments because we're not sitting there with our hand out asking them for money. We're making our own money. We're making stuff happen on the ground, and it's exciting, and it's fun. And when you meet a successful micro-entrepreneur, most of them would tell you they would never go back to work. And in fact, I am officially unemployable now. I could never sit there and work for somebody else. In today's market, with the technology that we have available, we've got computers, you can, go f you can sit at home, you can build an app, you can make a million, you can create something that's really popular. And when I talk about being small, I'm not always talking about small money. I'm talking about just thinking about not having to be these ma one of these massive organizations that changes the world. Just look at changing your own corner of society. Do the thing that really fires you up, that uses those skills and talents that each and every one of you has. And each and every one of you is going to have a unique take on this. We also have an opportunity where we've got marketplaces and access to markets in a way that we've never had before. You can go out and test your ideas like that. You can create something, put it on Etsy, put it on eBay, put it on Amazon, and see if people want to buy it. Are they excited about what you've created? And then once you know people want to buy this, and this is a really big secret, nobody tells you, <laughs> You have to have a customer first. If you don't have a customer, someone that can pay you and give you enough money to put a little bit back to yourself, your business is never going to be successful. You have to really get that va value proposition so right where people get why you're charging a particular price and you're charging that price because it pays you, it pays the business, and it gives great value to the people that you're serving. Social media gives us an opportunity to connect with our customers in a way that has just never been possible before. You get to find immediately what it is that they want and what it is that they're looking for. We have access to our customers globally, but we don't have to go global. We can stay local. Another woman in our community was a nurse. A child was brought into her, her hospital with third degree burns on, her, on his arm. She was so distressed by seeing this child and the mother's panic that she decided she was going to set up a first aid practice, training practice for parents. She focused on one's worth only. Her business is called First Aid for Life and today she's got nine freelance trainers that work around the borough teaching parents and now GP surgeries how to do immediate first aid to help things like burns. She's just about to launch her, for her online program so that she can now go out to a global market. Did she envisage that when she started? I suspect not, but that's what she's doing. And it's, I think it's amazing what we can do when we have enough passion and power around a subject. My hope for you is that you will start to explore your inner micro-entrepreneur. Think about the things that you can do, the things that you've got to offer, and the ways that you can change something that is meaningful to you. The secrets to success are not, not confusing, actually. I mean, there's this very simple process to being successful as a micro-enterprise. One, you start with a hungry market. You have to find a community or a customer that needs something that you can create. Don't think, I want to create this and go and find the market. Find the market first. Then look at what can you create? What knowledge can you share? Who can you help? And who has the money to be able to pay for what you've got to offer? And then you go out and you deliver it. That's it. People make it really complicated, but if you have a hungry market and a way to serve them, you've got a successful business. And it doesn't have to be massive. What's your personal goal? What's your personal agenda? So I would like to encourage you, if you're unemployed, 
fantastic because you don't even have to worry about whether or not, <laughs> whether or not it's, you're gonna, giving anything up. If you're employed, that's great too because when you're employed, what you do is you start changing the balance. You explore that micro-enterprise micro and you, you give it one day of a week and then you give it two days a week and then you give it three days until the balance tips in the favor of the thing that's going to make you happy and make a difference in the world. It's okay, and it's okay to fail. If you learn from your failures, if you embrace them, if you think about, shit, what could I do differently next time? Then you will be able to move forward. Because we're so flexible, we can turn like this as a micro-enterprise. Big business can't do that. It's just you. So t and take advantage of that. Decide that you're going to choose yourself. You're not going to wait to be chosen. You're going to choose yourself, and you are going to make a difference, use your talents and your passions, think small, and become unemployable. Thank you.